Welcome to another video with Mr. Long and we're going to look at the RT PAT for those in grade 12s that are wrapping up your PAT for the year and let's say you are running out of time and you really need to try and maximize your marks. I'm going to show you the quickest way that you can get those database query marks as quick as possible. So this is my advice for you. So in your rubric, you'll come across this part of the phase two where you need to use some sort of database manipulation. In matric, you can use either Delphi code or SQL. And as you can see, there's quite a few of them. This is the 2024 one. It might change slightly over the years. They might include a few more. They might take some out. But for each one of these, you're getting three marks if it works correctly and is applicable. And even if you can't get it applicable, you'll definitely get two out of the three. So we want to make sure that we definitely get it working properly, but you are the only one that can decide whether it's applicable. So I'm going to show you how to make sure that you're getting it to work properly. So that's where we guarantee the two marks, but you are going to have to decide on how it's going to be applicable. So using what I show you today to make sure that you use it for scenarios that add value to your pet, and that way you can get the three marks. So when it comes to the insert, the delete, the edit, that's going to be your basic insert, delete. You can do that using your normal grade 11 database handling. If you've got a login, for example, and you need to register, you can then use an insert a record. If a manager's editing or deleting records, you can add that very easily. If you are trying to log on, then you're searching for data in the table. That means you are going to be searching for the username and password. So those four are pretty easy to do already through our other videos. But it's the sort, the show all fields, the complex ones, the at least two queries. How can we set things up so that we can get these marks as quick as possible? So I'm going to show you how we can do that using SQL. It obviously depends on how your connection is done. I've got videos that show you how to connect using static components like this where you've got your connection, you've got your ADO table, and you've got your data source, or you can use dynamically connected where you are using code to do the connection. I'm going to show you how to do both cases. So just skip to the part that relates to your scenario. If you've got physical components that you've dragged in, onto your data module, then I'm going to suggest that you come here and you add an ADO query, and we're going to add that to our module, and I'm going to do the following settings. I'm going to set its connection to be the same as the connection to our database, and then I'm going to come here and give it a nice name. I'm going to call it QRY query. You call it what you want, and that's all you really need to do to set it up. At the moment, it's not active, but, but we'll make it active using code. If you want to see the data that's in the query, then it's going to need its own data source. So go find a T data source. We're going to add that. Give it a nice name. I'm going to call it data source query. And its data set is going to connect to the ADO query. So now we're going to write SQL on that component. If you've done your connection dynamically, in other words, you don't actually have any components, but you created them dynamically, you did your connection dynamically, your ADO table, your data source connectedly, then we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to do this dynamically. So over here, we're going to add an ADO query of type T ADO query, and we'll add a data source for the query, which is a T data source. And we'll do the same basic setup. So over here, we'll come and we'll create our query, instantiate it. So that means we're going to make it equal to what it is in T ADO query dot create and we're going to create it on the data module and then we're going to set the query connection to be to our connection that we've got over here as well and that's all you need to set up that and then for our data source we're going to make it assigned to a t data source dot create on the data module and then we're going to connect dot data set to our ado query so this is what you're going to add if you don't have an ado query so let's go to our main unit if I run it. And so there we can see that it's loaded using the ADO table. This isn't the query, this is the table. So we can see the fields that are in the database, the item ID, the item name for items. They're based on categories in the stock. So if we want to run queries, we can run them on buttons. If we want to see the results of those queries, then we need to connect the DB grid to that query. And this is how you do it. So if you've used the static way, then you must just click on your DB grid and you click on your data source and you select the data source that's connected to the query. And that way, whatever changes you make to the query will display in the DB grid. If you are using the dynamic option, then I would come here to the form, come here to on activate event. And as you can see, the DB grid's currently connected dynamically to the data source that's connected to the table. I'm going to change that so that it's connected to the data source that's connected to the query. So the code I now do will apply to either one of the scenarios. It's just you must make sure that you are using that ADO query to run your SQL statements. Now at the moment, 
you'll see that nothing's being displayed. So what I might do is when it gets activated, let's start with the query straight away. So just a reminder, I'm using the dynamic one for this example. I'm referring to this particular data module. I'm looking at that for where my components are on. So over here, we're going to say with this dynamic example, do begin and end. And this allows me to just use the ADO query commands as is. I like to think of it like changing a light bulb. If you're going to change a light bulb, you first switch the light off. You then change the bulb and then you switch it back on. So we're going to first start with switching our light bulb off by making active equal to false. And then we're going to set our SQL. Now, there are two ways that you can do it. You can either set the text, then you must put your entire SQL statement here. Or you can construct it by using the SQL.add very similar to like a memo.lines.add you add each line of your sql statement that can also work but just if you're using the add remember you must first clear it at the top here somewhere before you start adding lines otherwise you are adding sql statements to the end of previous sql statements and that's why i'm going to use the text one and then we're going to switch our light bulb on by setting the active equal to true and i want to display everything that's in the table in the db grid because we are connected to the db grid so i'm just going to say select star from tbl items so that's my simple sql statement so if we run you can see that our select statement is busy running now in the db grid this is not based on the ado table this is based on the ado query and so looking over here we have show all the records using a selection query so we've technically ticked that block off and so now we can come here to run query where we can do code that does those queries. And so it's very similar to what we've got over here. Because you've got one working, all you can do now is copy and paste onto your different buttons. So you can have multiple buttons running, each of them running different queries and showing different results. So let's click on this button. So you copy and paste and now we can do a select query where we only want the item name and item price and category from TB items where the category is the fruit and the item stock is greater than naught meaning they've got stock of the fruit so if we run that if we run the query our table now changes to all the items of all those where we have fruit in stock and now technically we've done a query where we've used an and you can obviously use a bit more complicated options using maybe all or like to make sure that it's applicable but you saw how quickly it was for me to add a new query and get those marks now you need at least two queries that have calculations such as minimum maximum sum average so this is ideally suited with groupings so if i'm going to change this query i'm going to have the category and the average of the item price from tbl items and i'm going to group it by category let's run it we click on the button if there's an error in your sql it'll be like that so i think if you remember correctly i think it's avg is the function so there's the different categories. There are the different average prices. Now we can then format it and have an as if we wanted to. For example, we can have this as average price. So if we run the query, we can see the data like that. This now is technically one of my calculations. Now, if you're not wanting to display it in a DB grid, maybe you want to display it in a memo control, then you don't need the DB grid. You can just run the query. And then once the query is run, then you just go through the query as if it was an ADO table. In other words, you go the query dot first while not the query dot end of file and then query dot next, just like we did in grade 11. And remember that if you are doing it on a query, you only have access to the fields that are mentioned in your query. So I only have access to category and average price, even though that doesn't exist in my table. I did create it. So then we can go our rich display dot lines dot add and we want to display the category followed by hash nine followed by the field called average price and because that's going to return a number we must format it but i can now format it as a float to string f with the ff currency comma eight comma two just so that you can see everything so we ran our query and then our query is going to go through every record extract the data you can do calculations on data you could even put this data into an array so let's just run it we run the query so forget about that there you can see our data is all nicely displayed i would first set up obviously the tab stop so that it's lined up nicely 
But as you can see, you don't actually need the DB grid to display the data. You can display it the way you want it. And by running these queries, you could then maybe you want to put the data for it into an object. If you want to put it into an array. So for example, let's say we're going to put a parallel array here. We're going to create the price into a real array and the category into a string array. You could have probably preset category to the particular categories if you want. And then I'm going to put a size variable to say how many values are in the array. If I was doing this, I would first of all initialize our size to zero. And we want to put all of those records into an array. The prices into the price array and the category into the categories. Then if that's the case, for each and every record, we are going to increase our size. So although it was a zero, it's now a one. And we're going to say array price at position R size because now it's a position one. We're going to give it this value. And then in array category at position R size, we're going to give it that value. So that way we are using the query to get our data and we are populating a parallel array, which you can now then use your different al algorithms and calculations if you want to use arrays. Obviously you would still need to use the array, but you've ticked off a block of arrays combined with the query. And then you can do an SQL statement where you've got two tables. You can do an SQL statement where you've got a dynamic query using a variable. And it's quick to do. You just add a button. Obviously you would rename it to that, but you can take your code and paste it on your new button and then just run a new query. Um, just made an input box where you get the category that you want to filter by. It would be a lot better if you had, for example, a combo box that you select the category, but you can create filters of what data you want to display. So we want to select star from TBL items where the category is the same as my variable that I've got over here. I want it to be whatever's in the SCAT variable. So to do that, I just want to test my query to see that it works. So I'm going to give it a generic option. Maybe you want to put in order by item name in ascending order. So we add in a sort. Let's first test our query to see that it works. So this is on our second button. So it works, our query works for fruit, but we want to make it work for whatever we type in here. So if I type in vegetables, then this needs to change for vegetables. So to make sure that we use a variable, I want to change the word fruit to be whatever SCAT is, whatever the value is in SCAT. So you can't just go and say SCAT there because as you can see, it's blue. It's going to refer to SCAT, the actual text. So what I do is I, I want to replace the word fruit with the value in the SCAT variable. So I'm going to put quote, quote. Between the two quotes, I'll put a plus, plus. And between the two pluses, I'll put SCAT. If that was not a string, I would need to convert it. But this way, we've got our first part of our string. Then we go and fetch the value from the variable and then complete the rest of our string for our query. If we run it, I now can click on the button and type in drinks and click OK. It will give me all the drinks in the table. So this is a dynamic query that ticks off the box of using a variable. So in this lesson, I've shown you how to do those queries quite quickly. You can go do a query using two tables very easily. We've got videos that show you that as well. But as you can see, if you've set up an ADO query, you can simply add buttons and make sure that you get in all those queries. That way you guarantee to at least get the two because it'll work. But it's going to be up to you to figure out the best way to use those queries so that they are applicable, that they're meaningful to your project. And by doing that, you'll easily get one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six of these queries very easily. And that's 18 marks, which is more than 10% of your PAT. You can even use the queries to do those if you haven't done them already. So go set up your database to have an ADO query and then go check out the code and go see that you run the code. If you don't want to display it in a DB grid, then you can actually traverse your query like you did in grade 11 dot first while not in the file dot next. Hopefully that'll help you get those quick extra marks and good luck for your PAT. For more RT Pad tips, make sure you click on our RT Pad playlist. You'll find lots of helpful, useful resources there. And remember to stay a subscriber so that you can find out whenever we post a new video. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.